I'm a maker. And one of the most important things for makers are tools. And I also like to make tools. About a year ago, a friend and I were thinking about how tools for programmers are really letting us down these days. Um, you know, whether it's your integrated development environment, your IDE, like VS Code, eating gigabytes of memory, or it's your chat program, Discord, that's similarly just taking all of the real estate it can get. And we were thinking, you know, there, there has to be a better way to make these kinds of applications without spending so many resources on it. You know, for the past five or six years, maybe longer, there's been one major contender for developers who want to make desktop applications. Uh, it's called Electron. And if you use a computer today, you probably are using Electron in some shape or form because it's really easy to use. Um, it comes with some caveats though, and I found out about them because I was really interested in looking at how open source software ecosystems can grow and thrive and what kind of rights they confer and in some cases take away from you as a developer and ultimately as a user of the software. So as it turns out, friends over at the Pure OS project told me one afternoon, it was quite a funny, I said, hey, we'd love to put some apps on your app store. And, you know, they said, okay, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, Electron, you know, that's what all the kids are doing. It's the, the coolest tool on the block. And they just shut me down. They're like, no way, it's, it's impossible. We won't do that because it would violate our agreement with the uh, Free Software Foundation because our operating system is free Libra open source software. And, and it got me thinking, you know, but isn't open source open source, right? Isn't Electron, I think it's MIT licensed. Isn't that good enough? And if you care to go back in time and read 10 years of threads over at the, uh, the FSF, you'll see that, you know, Chromium ships something called Widevine. You know, oh, but Chromium, why is that part of Electron? Well, Chromium is the renderer, right? That's how we use our CSS and JavaScript and HTML to make things look designed and usable. And so Electron uses two major things. You know, one of them is Chromium, and Chromium is basically the heart of the Chrome browser. Now it's on edge, and it's kind of taking over the ecosystem. But unfortunately, there's no real, real way for you to remove this digital rights management part of it uh, called Widevine. And then, of course, there's some other issues with license headers being uncompliant. And basically, to summarize, they said, no way. Uh, Electron isn't going to be good enough for us. Sorry, you have to come up with something else. So we started shopping around and found a really interesting project called WebView. Um, I mean, if you know uh, a little bit about how um, the ecosystem works, you'll, you'll know that web views are basically mini browsers that uh, exist on Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, pretty much anything with a screen and an operating system will be able to show you a web view. And our first experiment was with, uh, with Go. You know, this, uh, this great developer from Munich called Serge made his project open source. And that let us look at all the code and try it out. I think in a couple of hours we had, we had an app that was like two megabytes. It, I know a lot of people don't think about how big things are, you know, as, as a developer, you've got, you know, eight cores and 16 gigs of memory, and you've probably got a fiber uplink and, you know, Size doesn't matter, it's just about 
how well it works, how performant is it, uh, how many resources does it consume, in theory. But in practice, it's all about how, how easy something is, how quickly can I ship, how many resources of developer time do I have to put behind this, um, do I have to train my colleagues in, in new languages. And as it turns out, you know, three or four months down the road of working with this project, we were suddenly able to make apps that were less than a megabyte and used half of the memory of Electron. I mean, Electron is already, um, I mean, there's enough memes about it out there. So, you know, we can, we can laugh at it, but the, the problem is one of scale and environment, right? So what, my problem with the Electron ecosystem is, is that if you have a really popular application that's downloaded millions and millions of times, you are consuming so many resources to do that. Bandwidth of the consumer, storage of your provider, uh, even storage space. I mean, if you think about how that scales across the entire fleet of, of devices that are using your software, then it kind of starts to get a little concerning, especially if you realize there are millions and millions of apps out there being written with Electron because it's so trivial to make. And that kind of highlights the, the third reason why Tauri came into being, and that is security. You know, Electron isn't in control of all of their major dependencies. Uh, they don't run Node.js, they don't run Electron, you know, uh, uh, Chromium, they are participants in a broader ecosystem. And that means when the Chromium team makes a change, they have to go along with it. That means when a zero day is discovered in Chromium, they have to go along with it. And even worse than a zero day is a one day, which is when everybody in the world knows about the problem there are exploits out there, but Chromium hasn't yet released its patch and that patch hasn't made it into your Electron. So when you look at the security posture of the things that Electron lets you do as a developer, it's exciting. It basically removes the sandbox of the browser and gives you really powerful access to the file system, to the operating system, to the network. And of course, if you don't do your job perfectly, if you, if you make a little mistake somewhere, normal hacks that can destroy a website, well, okay, a website crashes, or maybe they get my password, suddenly can transform into things like, that person now has access to my hard drive? And it, it's a, a cascading effect of, um, now, I'm not going to say misinformation, but in a rush to make something, and if you don't have the proper checks in place, then it's easy to make mistakes. And so that kind of brings me to the, the three core parts of Tauri's philosophy, and that is we want to make you as a developer and make your consumers safer, more secure, and more comfortable with the products that they're using. We want to reduce the resources that are being consumed. And we do that by building everything ahead of time. We compile your application. Instead of interpreting it entirely at runtime, we build it out right. And the third is the community. And a community is only as strong as the enablement of its participants. And so when we look at, at, at these three parts of the philosophy of Tauri, we started discussing amongst ourselves, how do we strengthen our community? How do we enable people to be safe and consume open source responsibly? And what it ultimately led us to about uh, six, seven months ago was the decision to make an, a very open organization with a flat hierarchy 
of course, a core team because somebody has to be responsible for uh, updating the code and pushing it through to, to master. But we still firmly believe that not only can people profit from the experience of developing on the core and, and making that transparent and easy, but we also felt that it's important for our work to contribute to the broader ecosystem. And so several months ago, we made the decision that instead of consuming someone else's bindings and headers, um, we were going to get involved directly in the community and help grow that community. And that community is the WebView community. At WebView, basically what you have is a bunch of C headers and a bunch of bindings. And what's been happening for the past several years is that, you know, different people have been making bindings to NIM and Python and recently Dino and C Sharp. And there's no like real collaboration between the people in the community. And furthermore, the, the developer, Serge, who created this initial project, started to get overwhelmed with the, the number of issues that were appearing in the repository and the problems that, that you're having maintaining a, a very important piece of critical infrastructure for three different platforms, you know, for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And so we joined forces with Zserge and some other members of the community and are starting the official WebView organization as a community-driven project, you know, based on these principles of sustainability, transparency, and accountability. And what we expect from this cooperation is a larger experience where at Towery, you won't just have to write your core in Rust anymore. I mean, Right now, we chose Rust because it's the safest experience out there for people writing code. But we envision the future where people can use any type of language. They can use Dino or uh, Node or C++ or Go or Python to build out the logic of their application and then use our bundler to create that app. And with this application protocol interface with the same API across the board, what we're going to end up with is a, a very interesting ecosystem because Tauri doesn't care what language you write your front end in. You can write it in Vue, you can write it in uh, U, you can write it in React, you can write it in Svelte, you can write it in just plain vanilla HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And so what that ultimately means is instead of having these silos of knowledge and silos of experience and approaches where the React developers are hanging out with the Node.js developers and the U developers are hanging out with the Rust developers, what we're hoping to enable is a much more diverse community where your particular flavor of programming preferences don't matter anymore. The only thing that's important is that you care about your code, you care about your community, and we help each other solve our problems together instead of pointing fingers and not taking responsibility. And I think that any effort th that serves to strengthen and build community is something that's going to have a much better chance of surviving in this crazy ecosystem where it's just never clear what's, what's next. I think the next thing that's coming is Tower Regent. You should definitely check it out.